In this video, you're going to learn how to graph absolute value functions with transformations. So we're going to be working with this form of the equation of the absolute value function, and we're going to talk about how to shift the graph, how to stretch the graph, how to reflect the graph. But first, we want to talk about what is the basic shape of an absolute value a function graph. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the parent function, which is this guy right here, y equals absolute value of x. And we're going to plug in some negative values, zero, and some positive values in a table. Now remember, when you put in negative three here, the absolute value always makes that quantity positive. So if it's negative, it's going to be positive. If it's zero, it's going to be zero. And if it's positive, it's going to stay positive. So whatever you put in here, you do that operation, absolute value, going to be positive. Now if we graph these points, what you're going to see here is that we're going to get a V-shape graph. So it's going to have a real sharp corner, uh, unlike a parabola which has that U-shape to it. And when you graph these points, there's your uh, parent function. Now notice this point here at the origin, 0, 0, see where the graph bends? Uh, or in this case, it's a real sharp corner there, that's your vertex, okay? And we're gonna be paying close attention to that vertex point because that's gonna be h and k in this more generalized way of writing the function. So let's go to another example here. Number one, y equals two times the absolute value of x minus one plus three. Now the way that I like to do these uh, graphs here is I like to think of the shift first. So I think of, okay, this one here means that I'm gonna shift to the right one and the plus three is up three. Now you're probably saying, Mario, isn't this a minus one? Shouldn't that be left one? Well, what you wanna do is the number that's grouped with the x here, that's gonna shift the graph in the x direction, but it's gonna have the opposite effect. So minus one means we're actually gonna go positive one. If this was plus one, we would go negative one. Okay, so remember the one here is opposite. This one here, the k value, it's gonna be the same as the sign. What I mean by that is positive three, we're gonna go up three, Minus three, we're gonna go down three. So this is gonna be right one, up three. That's gonna be our vertex right there. That's where that graph has that uh, change in direction there. And you've got two options now. One option, which I really like, is to look at this number in front of the absolute value. That's this A value here. This is what stretches the graph or compresses the graph or reflects the graph. Now, if it's greater than one, it's gonna be a stretch. It's kind of like we're pulling on this graph in the vertical direction, we're stretching it, which is actually gonna make the graph narrower. If this A value is in between zero and one, like a half or a third, it's gonna be what we call a vertical shrink. You're gonna be compressing it towards the x-axis, which is actually gonna make it wider. And then if it's negative, the negative is gonna reflect it, so it's gonna be opening down like that. Okay, so in this case, you can see it's two. You can think of two as like two over one. And two over one is gonna be like our slopes. So we're gonna go rise two, run one, rise two, and I'm gonna go the opposite direction because notice this is symmetric, this parabola about that vertex. So you can see it's a little bit narrower because the A was stretching it, okay, vertical stretch, and you can see that it's shifting it right one and up three. Now another way to do this one is to make a table, and a lot of students like this method here, and what you would do is you would place your vertex in the middle here. So let's go ahead and do that. So our vertex we said was at one, three, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick some points on either side. So for example, two and zero, three and negative one, because it's gonna be the same on both sides. So for example, if I was to put two, okay, in for x, two minus one is one, the absolute value of one is one, times two is two, plus three is five, this will also be five. If we put in three for x, three minus one is two, the absolute value of two is two, times two is four, plus three is seven, this will also be the seven because it's the same on both sides. Then you can just plot from the origin. But the method that I'm showing you is to think of this A value as the slope, like rise over run. And that's just a quick way to do it. Once you find that point, you reflect it over that line of symmetry, the line that divides the absolute value graph in half. Let's look at one more example. Number two here, we've got Y equals negative one half times the absolute value of X plus three minus two. So what do you think the three and the negative two do to the graph? Well, if you said left three, you're right, because remember this is the opposite, so negative three. This one has the same effect, negative two. So we're gonna go left three, down two. So let's get the green marker out here. Left three, down two, that's our vertex. I'll just label it V. And the negative one half, what do you think the negative one half is gonna do to the graph? 
Well, if you said that it's going to reflect it because it's negative, you're right, and the one half is going to compress it, making that graph like wider. But what I like to do is I like to think of this as like the slope. So from the vertex here, I'm going to go down one because negative one, and then right two, and then I could also go negative one and left two because it's the same on both sides. So you can see it's wider, okay, um, because of the one half, and it's opening down because the A value is negative. Now, if you don't like that method, go ahead and make a table. A lot of teachers show it this way. A lot of students like this method, and go ahead and put that vertex in the middle. So for example, here, plus three would be uh, negative three, negative two, and you wanna pick points on either side. So like negative four and negative two, negative five and negative one, and then you can plot these and you're gonna get some additional points on either side of the vertex to help you get a good graph. Now, the only thing that I haven't talked about yet is the domain and the range. Now, the domain is whatever the X values can be, right? So in this case, because the graph is going to the left and the right forever and ever, we would say the domain for this one is all real numbers. And actually for all three of these, the domain is all reals. Now, if we're talking about the range, we're talking about what can the Y values be, right? So if we're looking at this last one we did, the Y values can only be at this point or lower. So you see how that Y value is at negative two or below. So here for the range, we would say Y is less than or equal to negative two. So it can equal negative two or below. Whereas say for example, this one, it would be Y is equal to three or greater. So if you wanna see more examples about working with transformations like these shifts and these stretches, not just with absolute value functions, but with quadratic functions, cubic functions, greatest integer functions, all different types of functions to get a feel of how to work with these. Follow me to that video right there and we'll dive into some more examples.